I think it's really important to stay up on new technology and I'm 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 super into it. Like I have I'm I'm the guy that has Soundflow set up. I have macros for everything. I have stuff automated. I've got this Stream Deck over here like I could press one button and it does 15 other things that were meant to do uh, that was meant to do like I can select a region and I hit one one I hit this D click button over there and what's that what that's going to do is that's going to break the region it's going to go open up the D click isotope uh, RX10 plugin it's going to load my preset that is a good starting point uh, and it's going to render it and then it's going to shut that window now if you know, it's it's it, th th that preset that I've set up usually works most of the time. If it doesn't work, then I can go in and dial it in. But this is stuff that I'm doing with one button. I've done all of that stuff, and I can fly through edits like that. Same thing with with audio movers. Listen to that. That wasn't around a few years ago, but it's such a big part of of what we do now. My my flock patch bay. It's a digital patch bay. It didn't exist a few years ago, but it's integral to what I do. I'm 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 really big on staying up on new technology. Same thing with Atmos. Uh, wasn't around a few years ago, but now you know it's 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 leading leading the way. I think uh, we're we're in a we're engineers, so we're meant to be technical. We're meant to be up to speed, and you know there there's so much there's so much good information out there now that you really don't have any excuse not to be educated, be informed. Um, you know, you can go to go go on Sweetwater's website. There, any any time I want to get some information on a piece of equipment, I'll, I'll go find one of Mitch's videos explaining what that piece of gear does. And nine out of ten times, it's with the manufacturer, someone who like really knows it well. So he's asking all the right questions. You get to know about it. Um, I there's I, I was just in London with a bunch of people trying out all these different converters, like A being uh, the mix between like a bunch of different converters. Now even I'm like, oh god, I gotta go buy that. I gotta buy that. But it's it's just investing in yourself. It's reinvesting in yourself, um, and I'm gonna continue to keep doing that because that's what everyone else is doing. That's what the competition is doing. That's what my friends are doing. I think that's another big part of it. Like like the the whole collaborative aspect of music is 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 really catching on. And 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 me and my buddy Tizio, we mix records together. I Arash, my assistant who I work with, we mix together. It's it's very collaborative. Everything I see how the how producers do it as well. When we're in the studio, we did you know we we did a, a whole collab album called Slam Language too. Um, and and one the each record had multiple artists on it. Like artists are doing stuff collabor collaboratively. Um, I think that's where I see the future music because like there's. It's it's a lot of fun to do it that way too. I think a lot of like you know with pop sessions they they're used to it. They're used to having a room with five, six, seven, eight, ten, fifteen people. Also with us it's not as much, um, but uh, you know it's just cool because then it 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 you know everyone feels like they're part of something bigger, and you can celebrate together as well when stuff does well. That's that's the real the real fun in it. I like that there's a lot of content. People are putting a lot of stuff out. I think there's a lot. Uh, stuff is moving really quick, and sometimes the the all the details people tend to rush through them. I I, I would like for for there more, to be more time spent than the whole mixing and uh, you know just just sonic quality aspect. There's a lot of really really cool sounding records out there, and uh, the the tools are getting better. Uh, access to gear is getting a lot easier. There's not as much barrier of entry. I think with with SoundCloud and stuff, there was a lot of rush to put out content really quick, and it was really cool. People were getting access to to, to fans they never had, and and it, and, it, and people as artists grew really fast. I think it'd be cool to to see a lot of like like people pay more attention to sonic qualities and just the, spend more time in mixing and mastering and now at most process. Um, which is which I've I've been doing a lot and we've been seeing a lot more happen. There's some really cool sounding records out there. There's a there's a, the access to gear has become a, a lot easier. So I'm 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 pretty pretty optimistic for for stuff in the future. Been uh, I would say o over a year now uh, doing doing a lot of Atmos. Uh, it's cool. It's fun. I think uh, when I'm mixing in Atmos, because when I'm mixing in stereo, I think yes, there's a lot of it, it definitely is fun and all, but it's a lot of problem solving. It's a lot of corrective stuff. It's a lot of, you know, my, minute EQ moves and, and just, just getting it to sound good. The fun thing about mixing Atmos is when you've gotten a song that's already mixed, the stems are ready, they, they already sound good. Now it's, you can have fun, you can get, be creative. And also before, you know, you have all these sounds, you know, coming out of two speakers. Now you have 
options you can spread stuff out and yeah when you spread stuff out you're going to have to readdress things and re-eq things and all but it's it's a lot more fun i think all the the nitty-gritty stuff has already been taken care of so you can really get creative and have fun and i think the 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 format is just getting better and better and you know once it's in cars and it's everywhere it'll it'll become more of the norm you notice elements in a record that you wouldn't normally notice you know because you might have this weird you know pad that's really low in, in, in the stereo mix but it's just adding ambience and you're not going to really pick up on it but now in atmos everything is really spread up you just got to li literally sit in the room close your eyes and you're you're completely immersed and the same thing the headphones are getting better and better you can really you know uh just just experience a record in a, in ways that have it hasn't been before it's like kind of when you're when you the same thing with virtual reality you're playing a video game you you feel see stuff from behind and it just adds like a whole 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 different dimension and uh depth to it and um it's it's just really fun and people like it's it's really new right now so people we're just we're just barely getting into it barely scratching the surface i think it's going to it's going to get a lot a lot better and and kind of become the norm soon uh stereo is not going to go away stereo is always going to be there but it it's going to be a cool complement to it and uh, you know i'm 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 really excited for it i'm 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 going to treat the stereo the way i would treat the stereo you know nothing's going to change for that now once i'm done with the stereo uh i'm going to do my stems in a way that for atmos that that kind of benefits atmos mix i might separate certain delays i might separate the reverb i might group two instruments together that i think should be together i might separate the things that need to be separated it's just those decisions i'm making when the stems are done but as far as am i like doing things differently uh not not really in the stereo process i might get ideas i mean like oh yeah and atmos i'm going to do that and stuff but i'll still you know i'm i'm they're they're very i'm in my brain i'm i'm able to separate those two processes uh pretty well and i think that's important cuz you know you you still you you, you don't want to either of them to sacrifice you don't want to sacrifice stereo for atmos because you know when people are listening to it they're listening to one or the other they're not going to be listening to both at the same time so you got to really uh you know do do your job well both places <laughs> the way i looked at it was it's going to have to happen I, it might as well be me doing my own atmos mix than someone else doing it mainly because the stems take so long to do yeah. uh so i'm like okay if i'm doing the stems i might as well do that and then i started doing it and i was like oh this is so much fun cuz you know like when i get a record i'm doing so much of clean up and so much of fixing problems that by the time i'm doing atmos i've done all that work so now i can have fun and it's just everything's kind of good and ready and it sounds good and it's more you know like yeah you still have to mix and you still have to address things but it's more moving around and and it's just a lot like you know it's a different if it's a different experience that, that you didn't have before i think the most important thing when i for me personally when i'm looking for a studio monitor is they should be able to translate well like i should be able to trust them i should be able to trust the fact that what i listen to over here it's in in the car there's no discrepancy there's no difference there's nothing that surprises me there might be a couple of things that that stick out here and there but it's um, it's not like i'm in a whole different world with the pmcs i've really found a pair of speakers that i can dial into detail they give me i uh, another important thing for me because a lot of the music that i work on is very uh low end heavy i just need speakers that can take that but don't exaggerate it or don't hype it um uh, just 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 be true and i really like the pmcs with the amphions that's what i i whenever i i can tell when i'm pushing too far it does a certain thing and that's when i get to know that okay cool don't go too far which in other speakers it's harder to catch uh and then the ocean waves are just you know just big for the artist it will shake the room it it gets it gets it tells me what it's going to sound like on mains in a big studio gives them the club feeling uh i just and i i'm 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 a strong believer in using all of them you know just for their strengths uh and for what i'm comfortable with that's the most important thing uh it's really what what you're comfortable with i think being able to get get the speakers loud with the artist that's what matters but i mean it's a lot of I don't know if it's one piece of gear that I can really say that helps with the artist. Yeah, the compressors make make the vocals sound loud, the EQ helps, but it's it's a lot of small things put together, a lot of in the box stuff as well, a lot of clean up, but just being able to get the the vocals present and loud and 
get that get get it to knock, get the eight oh eights loud, the kick to cut through, get the music to sound bigger. Because a lot of times we we we're, we're dealing with a reference that everyone's used to. Uh, you meant to take that apart, dissect it apart, and put it back together while keeping the integrity of it. Uh, my mix bus is, for the most part, analog. If and most of the other stuff I keep in the box, I mean, I'll use hardware inserts. When the thing is, you got to see what can help you get there faster and give you the best best result. Yeah, in the box is going to be faster, but if it's you know, I mean, just if you're spending like a lot of time trying to dial in a sound in the box but you have a piece of gear hardware that works really well and you know it's going to kill it right away that's when i tend to go there so i think the analog stuff just helps me get to where i want to be a little quicker but i'm still using a lot of stuff in the box as well because it sounds good when it gets by the time it gets to it and that just pushes it over the top and polishes it and also glues everything back together I don't know if I. Th I would say maybe, maybe my VT5 is the piece of gear that I like the most. Um, but the speakers also. Maybe Pro Tools actually. That that was a tricky one. But Pro Tools probably because because all the artists know that they, they mess with it. And that's what we use every day. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give that one to Pro Tools.